In order to really understand uh, algebra well, uh, it would be useful for us to know a number of things about the foundations of algebra. And uh, those include evaluating expressions, being able to classify numbers, and uh, understanding the properties of real numbers. And I just wanted to show you uh, where those things uh, are with regard to other topics that we need to know for the foundations of algebra. So we're right now at properties of real numbers. Uh, it's one of the things we need to know in order to be able to solve equations and solve inequalities and do these other fun things that we do in algebra. So let's get right to the uh, this concept, uh, this topic, properties of real numbers. And by the way, I'm also going to refer to them in class as magic powers, because that's exactly what they are. If you understand these properties, then you're going to have the magical ability to successfully get answers to algebra problems. And so these guys are really important. We're going to use this throughout all the algebra that we look at in this class. So it's important to know these properties. So let's start with uh, these two, the associative and the commutative properties. Now these guys, these properties, uh, they do look a little different. They're similar, but they look a little different depending on whether we're talking about multiplication or addition. And it turns out they don't apply to subtraction and division at all. So I'm going to get those guys off the table right away. Uh, there is no associative property for subtraction and division, and there is no commutative property for subtraction and division either. However, there is an associative property for multiplication and usually in books it looks a little something like this. It says, hey, if we have uh, A and it's multiplied times B times C, that is exactly the same as if we had A times B times C. Those two things are equivalent and we're supposed to believe that and take it for granted that's true because of the associative property. Uh, and, and another way of saying this is associative property means no matter how you group things that are multiplied together, you will get the same product. So again, we're talking about multiplication. The result is called a product. No matter how you group things, when you multiply, you get the same product. So this grouping and this grouping gets us the same product. Now, one of the things that we don't see uh, very often explained in books is this, is that you can say A times uh, B times C. This is a whole nother way to use the associative property of multiplication. It is the same as A times B times C. You see there where I just threw away those parentheses? Well, you can, and you can do it because of the associative property. Now, in class, we're going to be doing this sort of thing, and when we do, I want you to be responsible for the, for knowing why it is legal for us to do this. Now, let's real quickly take a moment and try to verify that this actually works. Uh, what if we had a couple of numbers? Uh, what if we put numbers in? So 2 times 3 times 4 uh, let's see, PEMDAS says 3 times 4 is 12, times 2 is 24. Is that the same as 2 times 3 times 4? Well, if we do this in order, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24. Yes, yeah, sure enough, we get the same exact result. So, we should be able to take things that are multiplied together as long as everything is multiplication, and we should be able to change the grouping any way we like, including removing the grouping symbols altogether. Same thing applies for uh, the, the well, uh, let's, let's talk about the associative property for addition because it's so similar. So for addition, we say that if we have A plus B plus C, that should be the same as A plus B plus C. Okay, again, that's the associative property and we're supposed to believe it. So uh, again, I'm going to repeat to you, yeah, that's great. You, you should be able to regroup things that are added together any way you want and still get the same sum. But uh, I would also like to add on to this that it also means 
that uh, we can, uh, since, since we're talking about changing grouping, it also means we can just throw away the grouping symbols altogether and also still get the same sum. So the associative property for multiplication and for addition is very powerful. It allows us to throw away parentheses when we have all addition or all multiplication. And, and again, we could verify this pretty quickly. Um, what if we take 5 plus 6 plus 7? Do we get a different result if we do 5 plus 6 plus 7? I'm going to leave it to you. Why don't you try the left side, you try the right side, you check and see if we get the same result. Now, let's go on and let's talk about the commutative property of multiplication. Again, a very powerful power, a very powerful magic power or tool in our tool belt in order to address algebra problems. So what does it look like? Multiplication. Well, what the way the commutative property works is if I have a times b times c, what the commutative property says is I can rearrange those guys when they're all multiplied together and I should get the same product. So c times a times b should be exactly the same result. And uh, again, we could verify this pretty easy. Uh, why don't we try something like uh, 3 times 4 times 5, and we'll rearrange it and do something like uh, 4 times 5 times 3. wonder if we get the same result. Why don't you check it out and see for yourself? Uh, and uh, I will admit this to you. I'm probably going to try to trick you when you get to the test, and I'm going to check to see, do you really understand the difference between the associative property and the commutative property? So I might pull something like this on you. I'm just going to, for those of you that are paying attention and taking good notes and studying your notes before the test, I might ask a question like this. I might say something like, uh, uh, in this particular case, which property is being uh, is being demonstrated here? Now, can you see what I'm doing? Can you see the trick? Look, there's parentheses. So sure, and so it must be the associative property. Yes. No. Notice that we're not regrouping the numbers. Three and four are still in the same group. Four and three are being grouped together. Th four and three are being grouped together. The only thing that's changed here is three and four are in different positions. Now. That means we're using the commutative property. So uh, uh, I'm going to leave it for you to double check and make sure that this equals this. But this is an example of commutative property, even though there's parentheses. Associative property means you can regroup things that are multiplied together any way you want, and you'll get the same product. Commutative property says you can move around all the factors in a product, and you will still get the same product. All right, let's move on to addition. So in addition, same kind of thing. If we have a plus b plus c, that should be exactly the same if we do b plus c plus a. Those two sums should be exactly the same. And again, we could probably prove that, or at least verify that it works in one case pretty quickly. Um, what if we try something like uh, 4 plus 7 plus Oh, what the heck. Let's try 9. Uh, I wonder if we rearrange those. Do we get the same sum? So we'll try something like 7 plus 4 plus 9. I'll leave it to you to double check and make sure that those sums are the same. Okay, so that's the commutative property. Commutative property says we can rearrange factors and get the same product, or we can rearrange terms and get the same sum. Uh, so as long as I'm giving you these these words, let's go ahead and write those things. I'd love for you to have in writing what I said. All right, I thought it would be nice if you could actually write down the words associated with associative property and the words associated with the commutative property. So here they are. Go ahead and add these to your notes. Inverse properties, again, what's important here is, is that uh, you know when you're using them what 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 it is called that you are using. So uh, inverse properties, there's one for multiplication, there's one for addition. For multiplication, we say that um, if we have uh, a and we multiply it times 1 over a, we will get 1. Okay, so uh, this 1 over a 
is known as the inverse of A uh, with regard to multiplication. And in fact, actually, um, we have a fancy way of saying it. It's called the multiplicative inverse. Phew, I could just barely fit multiplicative in there. Anyways, uh, this guy right here, uh, it is known as the multiplicative inverse. If I have the number A, uh, and, uh, I, I, and if I have the number A, its multiplicative inverse is 1 over A. Now, why do we care? Well, we use this when we're trying to get a variable all by itself. So if we have something like, uh, for example, uh, 2. Oh, by the way, there is another uh, name for multiplicative inverse, and I think you've heard it before. It starts with an R. I'll give you a hint. Um, you want to pause the video and see if you can remember? Okay, uh, here we go. I'm about to reveal it. Anyways, uh, the other name for this guy is, of course, the reciprocal. So let's take a quick look at an application of the reciprocal. Reciprocal. There we go. Um, let's say we have something like 2 thirds x equals 7, and we'd like to solve this guy. Uh, well, we just use our hand. We, we just multiply 2 thirds x times the um, inverse of 2 thirds, which uh, it turns out will be uh, 3 over 2. That's the reciprocal. And uh, and so then we, uh, then there's other reasons that we have to multiply both sides times three over two. But I uh, just wanted to let you know. Notice that three over two times two over three equals one. That's why we care about the multiplicative inverse. So um, it's the inverse property for multiplication. Uh, the reciprocal is known as the multiplicative inverse. Let's look at addition. For addition. If we take a uh, and we add it to negative a, we expect to get zero. We call negative a the additive inverse of a. Um, so again, this guy is the inverse. And technically, because we're adding, it's the additive inverse. And in the, in the end, we get zero when we add a plus negative a. Another way to say this is it's the opposite of a. Uh, so when we add a number and it's opposite, we get zero. Now, uh, there's also these things called the identity property. And, uh, this one's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. If we have something like, uh, oh, uh, let's say, uh, some number a and we multiply it times 1. I'll, I'll actually put the 1 out in front here. If we multiply it times 1, we expect to get A. In other words, identity. Identity is what we think of ourselves, okay? And so A is the same as A. It is the same as itself. And we can get back to A if we multiply A times 1. So here, um, this is 1 is known as the... Um, multiplicative identity. So again, there we come with that fancy word. I'll go ahead and take a minute. So uh, why do we care about the multiplicative identity? Well, uh, it'd be really nice if we have something like uh, 5x equals 15, and we go and we divide both sides times 5, and we what we technically get here, a lot of times we just throw away the 5 over 5, but technically what we're saying here is, is we get 1 times x, and that then equals 3. And so what we're saying with the multiplicative identity is, is if I have 1 times x, that's just x. That's why we're allowed to throw away the 1, because it is the multiplicative identity. There's no reason to have it there. 1 times a gets us a. All right, it'd be nice if when you threw away that 1, you had a good reason for it. Let's take a look at addition. So for addition, uh, the identity is 0. If we take a and we add it to 0, we get a. So adding 0 to any number just gets you that number. So of course, you know, easy example. Uh, oh, uh, oh, and so therefore, uh, 0 is known as the additive identity. I'll go ahead and write that out. So again, why do we care about the additive identity? Well, you know, when you're doing things like 3x 
uh, minus 7 equals 5 and you uh, add 7 to both sides to try to solve this equation and you get 3x uh, equals 12. You don't really get 3x equals 12. What we really get is 3x plus 0 equals 12, right? Negative 7 plus 7. These two guys are additive inverses of each other so they give us 0 and, uh, and, and, and usually we just don't put in the plus 0 because we know by heart that the additive identity, that this plus zero is just 3x. So it'd be nice if you knew when you threw away that zero that you're using the additive identity. Okay, I've got a challenging problem for you here. What if you have to do like 3 times uh, negative 7 times 48 times square root of 2 uh, times 13 uh, 0.7 uh, times a bunch of other stuff. You know, I'll just, I'll just write some other numbers out here. Uh, okay. And let's say that I asked you to do all of this in your head. Um, uh, if you want to pause the video and take a moment, you're welcome to do it. Uh, and uh, but, but I'm about to introduce a new concept. Okay, so hopefully you've paused the video and you took some time to figure out what the answer is. Or maybe you knew right away that the answer is simply zero. Well, why is the answer simply zero? It's because of this wonderful property known as the zero property. If we take any number and we multiply times zero, we get zero. That's really cool. Now, why do we care? Because later on, we're going to be doing some fancy stuff uh, to solve fancy kinds of equations. And when we have something like uh, x plus 3 times x minus 2 and we know that that's equal to zero. We can use this zero property in order to figure out what x is. And we don't even have to do anything fancy. We simply say that if x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals zero, either x plus 3 equals zero or x minus 2 equals zero. And that just makes uh, this so much easier to solve because either this is true or this is true. That gives us two possible solutions. Now, we don't have to love both of them, but we certainly get to and we get them because of this zero property. So in this case, we get x equals negative 3 and we get x equals 2. And it turns out those are actually two possible solutions to x that we get. Thank you very much, zero property.